for taking the time today to uh, spend some time listening to our podcast, Unwritten. I'm super excited because today I have Danette Dykeman. She is a health optimization coach. She's also a full-time nomad and a dog mom. So I know she's going to have tons of great stories to share. And welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. So it's interesting to me that you are a full-time nomad. You live in a van with your dogs and it's a lifestyle that obviously is um, glorified on YouTube, but uh, (laughs) I've actually lived in a van before. I don't think we talked about that. And I know how hard it can be and what a pioneer life you're living. So kudos to you that, uh, you know, it's, it, it's challenging and I, I want to hear more about that, but why don't you take us back to um, kind of how you started this whole journey with, with health and living the life on your own terms, because I'm sure it wasn't always like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, van life wasn't even a dream. It's just kind of where I got to after many, many things happened. So I think my story is uh, a lot like lots of millennials where there was kind of a checklist and a bunch of different things that if you hit these marks and kind of hit these milestones, it was um, not to sound cliche, but it was guaranteed happiness. You, you you would do it right. So I I graduated top of my high school class and I went to college and I got a corporate job and had the health care and benefits and 401k plan and got married and had a house in the city and, um, you know, kind of, kind of did all of the, the checkbox things and got to 2018 and my health was failing and I was depressed and anxiety ridden and wasn't what I thought happiness like, well, this didn't, this didn't work. And I had to be honest with myself that I wasn't I wasn't enjoying life and that all those things hadn't really added up to um, what what I thought they would. So um, long story short, I I mean, a lot of different things happened and I put a lot of different things um, in place. But um, like I mentioned, I was in corporate. I shifted out of that, um, quit my job and went back for my health coaching certification, launched my own business at the same time as getting divorced and selling my house and hitting hitting the road in a van with my dogs full time. So kind of a full 180, um, what kind of feels like overnight looking back, it all happened pretty, pretty quick once I put the wheels in motion. Yeah, um, I think it's really interesting that growing up, we're supposed to do all these things. And if we do the things, if we buy the house, if we have the husband, the marriage, the uh, the good job with the benefits, that that should be enough. And then, you know, when I was going through that, I I felt a tremendous amount of guilt. Like, why can't I just be happy? Yeah. Did you have that feeling at all, or what was it like for you? What was the main thing that made you decide that your happiness was was truly important? Absolutely, I think. I think things kind of start to like pique your interest and you hear a podcast that you're like, Oh, maybe, maybe I could be happier. Um, you know, that sounds, that sounds different. And things start to this like unthreading a sweater. You start to pull one, one string and the whole thing kind of <laughs> unravels. Um, and I think when you start to toy with the idea of like, well, could I be happier and could, you know, could something be different and, um, and the like you said the shame is from like well I did all these things and that's supposed to be enough is it something wrong with me am I doing something wrong am I I broken and every human's experience is different and if there's an an itching or an itching that there's something different or there's something more um that you just stay brave enough to kind of follow that intuition yeah did you try anything else before you uh got into the van was there anything else that you kind of uh, dabbled in and then kind of came back to uh, or or you're like oh yeah I guess that's not me yeah I mean it was like I said it was 
I say it was overnight. It definitely wasn't like everything happening. And like the end game was all kind of happened really fast getting in the van. But from basically 2018 on is when I was like, I'm really sick and struggling with my health. Like corporate is really toxic and kind of misogynistic and I'm actually really unhappy. And um, so these things, like I said, little um, ideas or little light bulbs of like, huh, maybe there's something here to explore more. And I think you start slowly. So I I got a job at a pure bar studio. Like, can I add something else into my work life that is back to, I grad, I was a ballet major. So going back to something where I'm using my body and, um, you know, working with people in a different way and in a kind of all women focused environment, um, there was things like that, where I was like adding into my life and seeing like, can I keep kind of the base, the base and everything that I've worked for. Um, and established up to this point, can I leave these things the same and just add into it? Um, and started toying around with th things like that. Um, but it's, it's a it's a journey, you know. It's it's a it's a it's a learning thing, and it doesn't it's slow. And I think you I did start to you learn things from each one of those. We're like, okay, adding in isn't enough. Something really has to change. Is what I came to for myself. Yeah, and. Coming into yourself now, you're at the point where you're taking on clients who might have been or might be in something similar to what you were in. What what were some of the things you noticed right away when you decided to start living on your own terms? Did the depression go away? Did, uh, did something tell us some of the signs that you knew you were on the right the right path versus right path. the people pleasing path. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm definitely still on that journey. I think there's never a destination. I think it's really important that with social media and, and things we see, it kind of looks like people have reached the mountaintop when they start to tell their stories. And I don't think that's the case for, for anybody. I think you make your situation better, but you're always on the journey. You're always in it and, you know, working towards something every every day but like you said what were the what were the hints or what felt different um as I started to do these things like I like get in the van and get on the on the road was just a sense of of freedom and almost lightness that there was so much hope and opportunity and it wasn't that um huge weight of feeling like I'm stuck um I often in my corporate job and in my marriage, it just felt like that was the next 60 years. Like there was no out, there was no change. There was no opportunity for anything to get better or worse. It was just kind of like groundhog's day. Um, and that feeling went away when I started living, like you said, in your own terms and, and starting to design a life um, that, that feels good and feels in alignment with, with your core and, and your true happiness. What influence, I'm kind of bouncing back now, what influence did your parents have on your um, the idol, idealistic uh, mm. reality that you created first? I think our parents are, like, that's where we learn everything from. That's what we grow up in. That's the first 18 years of our life for lots of us is to have um, those examples of our, our siblings and our, our parents. And um I was heavily influenced. I think even to this day, I, there's always concern and I don't know if it'll always go away, but there's always a piece of me that, you know, wonders if my parents approve of my lifestyle or approve of my, my choices. I think that's really hard coded and really embedded in us. Um, good or bad. It's something you work with. I think your whole life. Yeah. I think that when There's this idea that, well, we did it. Why, why can't you do it? Or they did it. Why can't I do it? I'm only speaking from my own experience because my parents have, um, they've been married for 50 years. They've lived on the same mm. property for, since I've been, I was born. And it seems like they've made it work. Now, I don't, it, it, it's just an interesting paradigm shift from making it work, 
creating what you need to create till you're 65 and then you retire and then to who we are now who Mm -hmm. you know who are we now because I don't know too many people that are still living that that life of you know you work hard and you stay at your job and there's not even jobs to stay at anymore so stay at anymore yeah no (laughs) I think it's really really different and I think it's hard for a generation that is our parents to to kind of accept how how different it is versus just seeing us as kind of copping out or, or giving up and it's just the the world is such a different place and technology is so different and our economic environment is so wildly different than um you know what getting a good job and having that salary kind of promised you and allowed you 50 years ago is is way way different than it is it is now and that's not millennials making that up like there's hard there's hard numbers that that say it's just, it's really different yeah when I told my parents I was quitting my job this was 2012 2011 2012 I, before I told my parents I was quitting my job and becoming a photographer was a photographer full-time I thought that they were going to be so mad at me that I was giving up somehow that I I couldn't do it that I was I had all these ideas in my head about what they were going to say or think and they never really said anything but (laughs) it is crazy how something so exciting as you know what I'm going to start my own business and I'm going to hustle and I'm going to make it work on my own terms how exciting that is but how when it comes to your How parents worry. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like this is different sorry <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't know how to get I don't know how to get through that I, I do a little bit every day but it's really hard yeah. you know the the family dynamic and you know so you're living in a van full-time now I'm jumping back to now <laughs> you're okay. living in a van full-time how long have you been living in uh living the nomadic lifestyle yeah, so I hit the two year mark just August of this year, just right now. So I'm two years on the road. Do you take yeah. breaks? I do I do. I do and I don't. I'm never really out of my van. My van's always with me, but I do um some house sitting and I've had some opportunities that have put me in a in a town for like three or four weeks, um, where I'm in in one place or in one city and, and have a house or in pet sitting. So uh, that always gives me a chance to reset and have, have a shower every day and have laundry every day. And it's a little different than like being in the national park or, or wherever in my van a hundred percent of the time. So. How do you find spots to sleep at night? There is a lot of apps that, that we use. I overlander is a, a big one. And, um, I usually do it kind of the day of, I don't do a lot of planning in advance. Um, So you just, you find a spot. Usually there's lots of, lots of reviews and you can kind of feel out if it's still a legitimate spot or if it's been closed down. And um, I I'll stay in everything from a Walmart parking lot or Cracker Barrel parking lot to a, to, like I said, a a forest or a state park. And where do you decide where you're going to go next? Is it, you just kind of, you know, I know humans aren't supposed to be stuck in one spot. So yeah. I feel like you, you're you tuning into um, something pretty deep. So that's why I'm asking you these questions. But how do you yeah. decide? Yeah, no, I think right there, I think that is a piece that I found so interesting that um, like humans are nomadic, like biologically and evolutionarily. Um, we're not meant to stay in one spot. So there was a little bit of my anxiety that kind of disappeared when I got into this and I had the daily kind of normalcy of like you have to find somewhere to sleep you have to find somewhere to get water if you're out and you know it's it adds in the the things we're supposed to be concerned about versus like scrolling social media and finding things to be concerned about if that makes sense so wow. I yeah, thought that was steep. yeah inter- interesting when I when I took on this lifestyle that I was like oh this this feels right, even though it's like maybe a, a stressful thing to think about, like, oh, you you don't live in a house, you have to find water, you have to find all these things. It's kind of what we're meant to do. So, yeah, you're being uh, authentic. 
to yeah. your, your human roots. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. So how do you run your business nowadays? How do how did you start your business? Because um there's one thing like you said, finding a job that suits you versus starting a business. So how did how did that shift happen? Yeah. So I was on the road. Um, I was in sales for automotive and I was spending a lot of time on the road. Um, with that, I was getting sicker from a myriad of different reasons, but, and I had always kind of been a sick kid that just got sicker into adulthood with autoimmune illnesses and, um, different infections and things. But I hit kind of a wall with doctors and being on the road allowed me a lot of time to listen to podcasts and books on books on tape or audiobooks um, and start to do the research I needed to do myself to start to heal myself. Um, I turned out to be a big health nerd and just like really loved it, loved everything I was learning and loved everything I um, was able to do with nutrition, with sleep, with exercise, anything I could learn about in a book or on a podcast and apply to myself and then see how much better it was making me feel and how some of my symptoms were starting to go away completely just got me deeper and deeper into wanting to make it my my passion and my my career and something that I could help other people do as well to to heal themselves versus beating their wall with with a medical system that maybe isn't helping them with their particular um, symptoms or diseases. Within your industry, the health industry, how do you combat the 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 medical advice that you know isn't correct that you know because your body is healed itself? Mm -hmm. you've learned how to heal yourself. You're trying to help other people heal themselves. So what do you say to somebody that's, you know, on the verge of either uh, taking a holistic approach and hiring you or going to a doctor and getting on meds? How, what is your approach to um, defining what you do and how you can help people? Yeah. So I take a really um, gentle, gentle approach with it. Uh, I mean, Western medicine is, is so advanced and has done a lot for us. Um, I know that's where our trust lays just at like a default. That's where people's comfort level is. So I will never take anyone away from their doctors off of any of their medications. Um, you know, that's always up to them and their doctor if they get to that point. But the, the great thing and the thing I love about what I do is nutrition and sleep and exercise and lowering your stress or learning how to manage stress is never going to interfere with your meds or your doctor's appointments. There's nothing I'm going to do that's going to hurt you or hurt anything that you're doing with your doctor. Um, most likely, it's going to significantly benefit you and make you feel way better um you're going to see some of the the benefits of of sleep or nutrition that might lead you to think or or get to a point where you can have the conversation with your doctor about going off of a medication so unlike medicines there's side effects and they you know they're complicated they don't work with each other you might you can take this but be careful with that with what i do there's there's no I'm not going to do any harm. We can just kind of, you know, throw spaghetti at the wall for lack of better words and, you know, try, try everything because there's nothing that you're going to eat or drink or sleep better. That's going to hurt, hurt anything. It's, it's just going to help you. What would you say to somebody that was in your shoes in 20, let's say 2017, because 2018 is when it sounds like you made the switch. Mm -hmm. what would you what advice would you have given yourself back then versus like because of what you know now yeah. I think be patient and it was kind of the advice I that kept me on the path the whole way through but unlike a pill you don't feel something overnight if you start a major shift with your diet or start eating better um 
there's some initial things where you're you're going to feel something different and you might it's different for everybody and you might be like oh this is this is really working you also might not you might not feel better for for weeks um like i said i started this in 2018 and i'm still tweaking my nutrition i'm still tweaking i was hard into cardio and i've shifted completely to um to strength training and and less cardio so it's such a um like I said, unlike medication with nutrition, with trying to fix things with nutrition and exercise and sleep, you're much slower to realize the benefits and see things really shift. So my advice to myself and to my patients is always just really stay patient, stay the course, um, know that it's working or look, you know, look for those signs where, where things are shifting um, and, and just stick with it. Do you recommend having a, a health journal or do you have a health journal so you can look back and see where you were or if it's you... helpful, you know, yeah. do, do whatever you need. I think um, a big thing I do with my clients in practice is um, have them write where they were when they started and what some of their goals were. And then we revisit them um, monthly. And then again, at the end of our four months together um, and they're not, and I encourage them to do things about um, how they were feeling with their sleep, how they felt every morning when they they woke up, how how they felt walking up a, a flight of stairs, um, things that are very specific and kind of niche versus did you lose weight? Because that's not always a good sign to tell if your actual health is improving. But these yeah. other things like, you know, are you waking up feeling refreshed um, can really signal to you that that it's working and I'm I'm getting something out of these these diet and lifestyle changes I'm making what I'm sorry I'm at, I'm asking such random questions but it, I feel like we're yeah. just having a conversation <laughs> for sure yeah I love it uh, <laughs> uh what podcasts who did you listen to that inspired you to take yeah, my, your journey yeah, my very first one was Dave Asprey, who's a biohacker and um, was big in Silicon Valley. Um, and he's pretty um, eccentric and kind of out there. I know um, lots of his podcasts and, and writing is, and the people he interviews is really scientific and really like grainy, but I think that's what got me kind of hooked I, I am a little bit of a science nerd um so I, I liked that um so that was that was a big one and from there uh Max Lugavere was another one whose um entrance into health and fitness and this whole thing was losing his mom to dementia and and going down a path of research about what can be done preventatively um yeah. to stave off diseases like that do you talk to your parents about your health journey and theirs? I I do. They can't get me to shut up about, <laughs> about it. Um, it's something I've gently, gently or not so gently pushed, um, you know, ever since I started finding things that were working for me. I think your friends and your family are the people you're, I, I was excited to share it with first because when it has a big impact in your own life and you see what it can do for other people, you, you really want to share that. Um, but with clients or family or friends, um, it's really finding an approach that works and it's all about timing. They're only going to hear it when they're, when they're ready to ready to hear it um, and kind of come from it with their own interest and desire to, to improve something about their health. So you live such a unique life. Do you feel like your business represents that as well? I try to make sure it, it does. I um, Things that I encourage for my clients definitely come from me living this way. Um, for example, I this this way of life has gotten me way more into nature than I ever was before. And I there have definitely seen benefits of that so I think when I can share something that I'm doing and I'm I'm living it every day um it's inspirational and and 
it's easier for somebody to take that and apply or like swallow that information um, versus just being like, I read this thing and you should try it versus like, I live this thing. I see how it works for me. Maybe it'll work for you as well. Yeah. I think a hands-on approach is so important. And I think that's what we miss a lot when, um, when we do go to see our doctors and I'm not sure any other place we would go and realize this, but the hands-on approach, I've been through this. This is why I am who I am. And this is why I want to help you. It sounds like that's where you're, that's where you're at. So Mm -hmm. where do you think you're going to be in five years? Where, what's the evolution? Do you Ooh, like I, I said, very, go. very much on the journey and not at the top of the mountain yet, which I hope I never yeah. reach the top of the mountain. But yeah. um, the one thing that nomadic life is, is like not, not planable, or at least it doesn't feel like that to me. Um, the more you see, the more you want to see and the more you want to do. Um, I do want to go overseas and spend time, whether it's in my van or um, just kind of as a backpacker, Airbnb, or um, I want to see more of the world and continue to advance my my practice and start to work with people all over the world, whether it's online, online and remotely, or or in a yoga studio in India. <laughs> How do you find your clients? Because you do live such a nomadic life. Yeah, um, this is the hardest part I won't I won't sharecoat this at all all. yeah online online marketing is the piece of my business that's really really hard for me I love the hands-on work with my clients and the calls and the coaching Um, but the marketing aspect of it is hard especially when I'm not in a community or in a town where I can get in front of a, a YMCA or a or a yoga studio or or network kind of in person um there's a lot of ways to to network in person on the road like I run into people all the time I just stayed last night at a at a harvest host it's another app we use for places to stay but it was a a wellness and taekwondo studio so there's all these little conversations that I have that kind of lead to clients or or kind of lay the foundation um but then social media has been my number my number one way to get clients and then just referrals and, and friends and family. With your business, what makes you different than other health and wellness coaches? My ability to um, take a really slow apo- approach. Um, mm-hmm. I do a four month program. It's not, um, I don't promise overnight results and I don't um, push anybody into a really quick program. Like we take our time um, lay a foundation. I like, I always say I meet clients right where they are. Um, if you're not going to overhaul, you're not going to, we're not going to overhaul anyone's diet overnight. You're not just going to switch. So, um, we do things really slowly and we implement things that are going to stick and be really sustainable. Um, and I coach you through, like I said, being patient with yourself and, kind of laying the foundation for a long-term health plan versus overnight results. And do you have different packages or how does it work? How often do you meet with your clients? And Yeah, I have. um, So my main, my core program is my four month program. And I meet with um, those clients every week uh, with one week off in case you have vacation or something. Um, So it's 15 15 one hour calls. And one of those is an hour and a half intake session. Uh, we do a really in depth, almost 30 page intake form where it kind of covers you, you know, basically from what you ate in childhood to what your life looks like now it, it runs the gamut. So you fill out a lot of, um, a lot of history for me. So we, I really get a, a whole picture of you. Um, and then we work through, um, everything. My four pillars are diet and, or diet and nutrition, uh, exercise, stress management, and then sleep optimization. So those are the, the four pillars of what we kind of break out, um, and work through over the 16 weeks together. That sounds awesome. 
Yeah. And then I have other little packages if you're not ready to do kind of the, the health overhaul, if you just want to um, get used to, or, you know, kind of figure out what it's like to work with a health coach. Um, I have a smaller program that's less of an investment and more like a, a health blueprint or a, you know, a health tweak. You walk away with some um, actionable things, um, but it's more of a self-guided uh, approach. You get some things to work on and come back um, and do it more on your own. Awesome. What would you tell somebody that wants to change their life and they were like you were in 2017 and they don't, they know they need to make a change, but they don't know how to do it. What were some of the actionable steps that you had to take in order to figure yourself out? Yeah. I think it's different. It's different for everybody. What's, what's going to work or what's going to inspire you. Um, so momentum is the word I come back to find anything that gives you momentum. So if it's listening to podcasts and trying one thing, um, if it's exercise and um, whatever it is, don't set like a giant lofty goal or something that's hu a huge change that's going to take a whole lot of energy. Set something like, you know, a walk around the block. If you do no walking at all, make a goal that's so easy that you can't not do it because that's going to help you gain momentum. And with that, comes your own inspiration and your your own um, commitment to yourself as you start to make those little changes and little promises to yourself that you don't break. They build on each other um, and you get this momentum into whatever it is. If it's a healthier lifestyle or it's financial security or working on your relationship, this kind of applies to everything. It's just to start really small, start with something and and build that momentum. I a hundred percent agree. It's always, it's never the big thing. It's all, it's yeah. always the little things. Yeah, for sure. And so how can my listeners follow along on your journey or, um, chat with you about health coaching? Yeah, I'm on Instagram the most the things about living in a van and being on the road. Um, and I do a lot of clips of, of health stuff too. So there's tons of information on my Instagram as well as how to connect with me through my website. I do a three, a free 30 minute coaching call. So you can get a taste awesome. of what health coaching is and what it's like to work with me if you're interested in doing that. Um, and all that information is yeah, on my Instagram and on my website. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to um, chat about anything we missed? No, I think, I think we covered a lot. It was, a, okay. it was fun. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you.